Hi, in this tutorial I going to share with you a combination of interesting techniques that will help you get to know Cinema 4D better. We will find out how to morph splines, how to simulate a large number of splines, how to use field force and how to render splines in Redshift. First of all we have to create a morph geometry using the morph tag for splines. We going to use is as a tractor to out field force. Create the rectangle with roundness. Drop the spline into the cloner. Change mode to radial, use XY plane and reduce the radius down to zero. Put the cloner into the spline mask in union mode. Create a circle spline. Group the resulting splines into a new null and name it source spline. For pose morph tag to work correctly, we need to equalize the number of points on both states of the splines, make the same point order and first point. For that, create the most spline and name it to state 1. Change mode to spline and use circle as a source spline. Change iteration mode to even and increase count of points up to 600. Repeat the same thing for the other spline. Hide the source splines and group the obtained. Duplicate the group and name it Morph Splines. Make them editable. Find a first point at X axis, click RMB go to point order and click set first point. Do the same for second spline. Copy the state 1 and rename it to Morph Spline Main. Hide previous one. Add Morph Tag to Spline. Change mixing to points. Delete existing poses and put our state splines into. Now we have a perfect morph between both states. Change mode to animate and check how it works. Drag morph deformer inside the spline. Morph deformer completely copies the data from the pose morph tag but allows you to control the strength of the effect through the field. But for this case we don't need that. So just animate strength of second state Put the result inside extrude and turn on edges rounding and you'll get the geometry you need. The next step is to simulate a large number of complex splines. Create another null, name it Geo, put everything inside and hide it.
Let's create a new most line in turtle mode and use a classic L system. Change display mode to line. Increase growth value to 7 and default movement to 30. Change the forces mode to include. This will disable the effects of any forces in the scene. Put most line into connect with enabled weld. Place it to the cloner in radial mode. And increase count of clones and radius up to 300 centimeters. Change plane to XY. Let's add a little chaos by using random effector. Put cloner inside the connect again, cause this will allow us to work easily with the rope dynamics. Group it again. And place the new group below the geo group in the object manager, because Cinema 4D uses a priority system. Add rope dynamic tag to our group of spline. Increase parameters of bendiness, stretchiness and radius. Now go to the project menu, simulation and decrease gravity value down to zero. Add turbulence force to check how our dynamic work. As a result, you will see that our splines are not connected to each other. To fix it, add the connector tag. Change search of radius down to 0.5. Enable same object, disable other object and the most important enable update live. Check the result. Great, our fabric is behaving the way we needed it to for the simulation. We don't need turbulence anymore, delete it. Now it's time to add field force to our scene. Expand duration of timeline to 180 frames. Let's add field force to our scene. Drag our geometry into the field force object list. Increase strength value to 3000. Select our geometry and change mode to surface and increase radius up to 1000. Go to display and expand the box size. Disable display vector length and increase line density. The result is not that we need. So to change direction, just add invert to object list. Check it again. Go to the project menu, simulation, and increase damping up to 10% or even bigger. Always checking the result. Let's make our spline extend then it comes to our geometry. We have to use vertex map to increase target length. Add vertex map to our spline. Drag geometry inside and switch mode to volume. Place obtained vertex map to target length. And change value to 200%. Check the result. we have a little jittering. To get rid of it, you can increase dumping or decrease field force value. Animate the strength of field force down from frame 60 to 100.
check the result. Almost done, now we can increase points in our spline. Just make Mo spline editable, select all points in point mode and subdivide. Now we must change search radius in connector tag down to 0.25, because spline point now closer when before. Check the result. Let's make obtained simulation more gradual. In field force at fields, add linear field towards Z plus axis. And animate Z axis position. All done, now cache the whole scene. I suggest you to play with the parameters inside Field Force and Rope Dynamic to get a more interesting effect. Now I'll show you how to render splines using Redshift. Add Camera. I'll change my ratio to fit the screen. Open Redshift Render View and enable rendering and you will see nothing. To render splines, you have to add Redshift tag to your spline. Change mode to capsules. Now you get the splines on the render. Let's see what it looks like up close. We have some linear angles, but we can fix it. Move to Redshift tag and decrease a little thickness and change mesh subdivision to fix. Now you got a better result. It's time to change a camera focal lens and create some lights in the scene. You can add a classic material to spline. For this case I don't recommend you to use reflections, because it's lingering your render time. Inside Redshift tag you can change thickness along the spline size. Congratulations you have learned a few tips in Cinema 4D. Thank you for watching, ask your questions in the comments and don't forget to give us a like.